Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. Very pleased to say I'm joined now by the NWA World Heavyweight Champion and the legend that is Nick Aldis. Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. Well, thank you, Adam. I think I think legend might be a, a tad of a stretch, but uh, certainly doing my best to try to get there in the end. Well, what, 950-odd days as, as champion is, is a hell of an achievement. But we're here to talk about you defending that title, uh, of course, at When Our Shadows Fall this Sunday, the 6th of June, against Trevor Murdoch. It's going to be live on pay-per-view on Fight, of course. Trevor Murdoch winning that 14-man at Battle Royal. How are you feeling about the match on Sunday? Well, I'm tremendously looking forward to it. Um, you know, I, I know that the... You know, the, the I, I love matchups where... Uh, the rivalry and the and the sort of contrast between the two guys is very very apparent. Yes, I love the idea. I, I love the idea that somebody uh, could could sort of jump on this jump on this train at any given point during this quite long build mm. uh, that we've had now, and still be pretty clued up within you know within one episode. Like, oh, okay. This guy's the this guy's the refined guy in the suit, and he's a you know he's a bit of an elitist, and he thinks a lot of himself. And then there's this other guy who's the you know the blue collar working man's hero. It's it's a tale as old as time. It's certainly we, we certainly haven't reinvented the wheel, <laughs> you know. But um, it just works, and I love it. And when and you know when you get a guy as talented as Trevor, mm. uh, who um, you, you know, I had such an instant chemistry with and have such a, and, and we both fully understand our, our strengths and weaknesses and how people perceive us. We both have, I, I believe anyway, a good degree of self-awareness, mm -hmm. which is vitally important to telling a credible story and, you know, booking sort of credible angles. Like, you know, there's just, I never believe in trying to swim upstream with anything. Mm. Like I, I've always like I've, I've have a pretty, <laughs> at this point, I've been in the wrestling business for, you know, 16 years, um, have, you know, been subjected to my fair share of online criticism. And it's, and, you know, so it's like you develop a pretty thick skin and a sort of self-awareness to generally the flow of like how you're perceived or where things are headed. So, you know, now I just, uh, in my, my time, you know, in the NWA has been sort of defined by me just sort of uh, steering the ship sort of mm -hmm. whichever way that, you know, I feel the wind blowing in that respect. And, and it's, it's served us pretty well because I feel like, uh, if you take AEW out of the equation, as far as a sort of, um, a, a new entity, mm -hmm. I feel like from a, a startup with three people and a YouTube show to now having a, you know, a streaming deal and, you know, sort of worldwide distribution and, you know, some pretty decent revenue. It's like, you know, we, we, we've done pretty well to bootstrap this thing, um, <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes, obviously, look, you know, you have somebody with the incredible amount of wealth that, you know, the Khan family have, and obviously suddenly it's like, seems like a drop in the bucket, you know, <laughs> but it's like, um, I'm proud that we're able to, to sort of make enough of an impact to where, I'm sort of perceived in that, you know, in that kind of upper echelon of guys and and our pay-per-views and our title matches get a lot of recognition and, you know, they, they get a lot of anticipation. And I think that's a testament to the way that we do wrestling. Like mm. we, we do wrestling our own way and we do it deliberately differently to anywhere else so that we can provide something different for wrestling fans. You know, we're, we're, I always use this analogy and it's not, it's going to be lost on, on Brits for the most part, but I always, I want us to be like in an out burger, right? You mm -hmm. know, in, in the States, obviously you've got McDonald's and you've got Burger King and they're everywhere. And then, you know, obviously cause it's America, you've got about 20 other fast food places. But, <laughs> but when you go to the, when you go to California or, you know, certain places like, you know, the West coast and certain parts of Texas and this and that you get in an out burger. Mm -hmm. And so whenever anyone from the East coast or from, you know, from somewhere like where I'm from, like where I live in Tennessee, it's like when you go to, you know, suddenly you see an in an out burger and you go, Ooh, in an out burger, mm -hmm. it's burgers and fries. Like it's, it's, you know, it's just, and, and they have a very, very simple menu. It's like, you know, the single double, you know, like sort of <laughs> everything's pretty straightforward. It's a, you know, but they just focus on doing it really, really well. Mm -hmm. Uh, with you know, with with no sort of gimmickry and and 
you know, uh, you know, unnecessary sort of bollocks with it. <laughs> and, and because it's, because, because their marketing is sort of based off of that exclusivity, mm. you can't get it quite as easily as the other, as the other places. So when you can get it, it feels more special, mm. you know, you really savor it because it's like, Oh, this is just a traditional, you know, good guilty pleasure, all American sort of fair. And like, that's how I want the NWA to be perceived like mm. a sort of guilty pleasure for the most, the most sort of jaded, hardened wrestling fan who is like studying every single thing. And also for like a casual fan who every now and then just kind of goes, Oh, I miss those days of, you know, wrestling. <laughs> you want to be that place where people can go. That's fun. You know, like that's a, that's an easy, easily digestible hour of, of content to, to consume and enjoy. No, uh, that definitely comes across. Uh, the reference to in and out Burger is not lost on me when I, made a trip to the west coast it was like people recommending right do this go to san frank do fremont street yeah. and make sure you get in an out burger so uh, i very much can appreciate where you're coming from with that um fans are going to uh, limited number of fans are going to be back in attendance for this show uh, it's been a hell of a roller coaster obviously not just for nwa for all of wrestling for the past year or so i know you had to take a long hiatus uh, with nwa of course uh, what's it like getting back into it and, and more importantly what's it going to be like with with fans back in attendance we've seen the likes of wrestlemania and double or nothing and you know the fans enjoyment of that but presumably also also the wrestlers you've been able to feed off that as well yeah i was saying during the pandemic that i i thought that the one the one positive that we could take from all this and I, you know that's just my nature i try to see the you know the positives that can come from any of these things um you know any sort of adversity and i did th- i said even then uh, the the one thing I could see happening was that there would be a renewed enthusiasm mm-hmm. and a renewed appreciation both ways. Like I felt like perhaps over the last few years, uh, wrestling overall had sort of shifted somewhat to a situation where it was kind of like most, most pro wrestling shows that I was seeing were kind of like, okay, we're doing our show. And if you like it, great. If you don't, we don't care. Like mm-hmm. it was very much like, here's what we're doing. And like, you know, <laughs> ta-da! Like there was no, <laughs> you know, there, 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 there wasn't that level of sort of interaction um, that was that you fed off of, and that 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 you know, the the thing that makes wrestling unique is that if something works, you can have that ability to adapt and and sort of go with it. So then the audience really feel mm. like they're you know organically part of something. Now the flip side of that is that yes, I I believe that there are perhaps too many fans now who perhaps do yield a bit too much power in terms of sort of the constant sort of threatening to boycott or, uh, you know, do this or we riot. And, you know, and and it's a very indicative of kind of the culture that that has perhaps got a little bit out of control. Mm -hmm. So I can see where that's probably why wrestling sort of bucked against it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, it, they went so far toward, I remember seeing it in TNA you know, they started catering a little bit too much to the most, to the loudest, you know, to the yeah, to the, yeah. the loudest online fans rather than, you know, you've got to take them into account, but you've got to understand, you know, that it's a, you've got to, it's a, it's a balancing act every day, mm. you know, every day you've got to try to kind of, okay, let's keep this plate over here spinning. Let's keep this one over here spinning. Oh, oh, oh this one's going to, okay. You know, it's tough. Um, and I think that, you know, there are, there are a collection of fans who sort of think, no, it should be all about like what pleases me and everything, everyone else is just stupid if they don't agree with what I think. And I think that as a result of that, maybe some of the, some of the, you know, the, the business in general started going, you know, we're just going to do what we want. And, you know, and so, it, and we reached a bit of an impasse. And I think that there was so much wrestling and there is so much wrestling that, I think perhaps both ways there had sort of, we'd lost a little bit of that specialness, mm. uh, the, you know, the, the excitement of going to a show and kind of anticipating what's going to happen and really just kind of being one with the moment. Instead it was, all right, you know, here I am ready to analyze this. And then the wrestlers are out there. Okay. Like I better make sure that I, you know, please everyone and don't, you know, and I think between all that, then we sort of got to this point where now, we, Oh, we can have fans again. They're excited to be here. Mm. We, we're excited to have them like we're going to interact with them again because human interaction is, you know, to me is really the sort of lifeblood of the industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, 
you know, now we have it and it's maybe, you know, it's going to be a blessing in disguise, or at least that's what my, you know, eternal optimism would like. To think. <laughs> um, in terms of like, you, t- you talk about like wrestling and, and, you know, the comparisons to say sports entertainment, and we've seen, you know, WWE going in a certain direction, but I felt like, like you said there with, with the return of fans, it does feel like a move, a shift more towards the sort of old school stuff, which is, is sort of inherent within within NWA, because uh, you know it, it's all one and good pining things on top of each other. And but it's sometimes, like you say, with with you and, and Trevor Murdoch, it's sometimes great to just get it back to the basics of the just like these are two polar opposites, and they are going against each other for this ultimate prize. Is that fair? I think so. Um, I think that. Again, I think some of this goes to speaks to the sort of culture that had perhaps uh, that's always been there, but had perhaps, you know, started to develop a bit too much power in the overall um, direction of the industry, mm. which is that th- th- this sort of um, narrative had started to develop where if you didn't do tons and tons of high impact, high risk moves and you didn't you know, pile false finish onto false finish onto false finish and you didn't do these incredibly intricate hard to remember high spots, you know, mm-hmm. with, with sort of a, a sequence of moves that could never possibly happen organically. And, it was, you know, it was very, ob- you know, it makes it very obvious to anyone watching that this was sort of planned ahead of time, that somehow you weren't working hard enough. Mm-hmm. You know, that somehow that, you, that you're, that, you know, that, and if anyone who didn't wrestle like that was quote unquote lazy, you know, whereas I've always been of the opinion that wrestling like that is lazy because, it's like your your responsibility as a as a performer is not only to the audience but it's to the it's to the big picture the long term you know um uh, viability of the business mm. and uh, and it's also to your other performers on the card mm. so you know <laughs> if Let's say you're. Let's say if if you go to a fancy restaurant and you go to one of those, you know, one of those incredibly sort of elaborate, you know, like a French something or other, where it's like seven courses, right? Yeah, yeah. Like a like a pay per view has, has seven matches. It's like going to a restaurant with seven courses, uh, and each chef is responsible for a different course. So like today, you know, okay, like you're the sort of you're an up and coming chef in a Michelin star restaurant, right? So today. You know, look, you're a low man on the totem pole today. Tonight, tonight's not your night. So tonight, you just got to make a little amuse bouche. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. And they, and I know this is a terribly highbrow analogy, but here we go. <laughs> so like, okay, so you bring out, you know, just a sort of a, a tiny, you know, foie gras or whatever, something, right? And it's like, oh, that was great. It's a mouthful. That was really great. Oh, delicious. You know, blah blah blah. Next course comes out, and maybe it's, you know, soup. You know, but it's like, oh, it's this, you know, whatever, right? And, and so on, and and it goes yeah. on, right? Until the end, where you get to the end, and it's like, here, here it is. Here's the, here's the, here's the duck confit with, you know, blah blah blah, you know, whatever, right? It would be the. Sometimes I see shows, and and it's like, suddenly, the third course comes out, and it's the fucking duck confit, you know, and it's like the whole thing, and it's like, oh, well, here's this and this and this and this. So now you're full, yeah. and you sort of go, and you know. And now, you know, you're sitting there going, I don't really want anything else. I'm sort of, you know, that was kind of enough. Mm. Um, I see a lot of, you know, just a lot of the product that I was seeing, you know, even prior to, to the NWA kind of uh, getting, getting rolling in 2017, just felt like an all-you-can-eat buffet, mm. you know, <laughs> where it was kind of like, why can't, can't I just savor this one thing? Like, that was really great. Mm. Suddenly, before I had a chance to even enjoy it and savor it, suddenly I'm being I'm being pelted with all this other stuff. Well, what about this? What about this? Try this. Eat that. Um, and there's a place for that, just not 24-7-365. And I firmly believe uh, that that is, you know, one of the reasons why the overall kind of audience may be, you know, diminished. Because to a lot of people, they just they just weren't they weren't watching for that. They enjoyed one or two matches to be like that, but they weren't watching for just that. And when it became just that, it just sort of lost its human appeal because mm-hmm. to a lot of people, they watched the product to connect with it on a human level because it's escapism. It's a sort of, it's a live Rocky, Rocky movie playing out in front of your face, you know, and, and people can 
live vicariously through that and suspend their disbelief. You know, but if it's a good card, might finish with the Rocky with a Rocky fight as the main event. But you know, some of the undercard matches might be a Jackie Chan film. Mm. <laughs> you know, where you you know, but if the whole card is all Jackie, it's kind of like okay. But you know, these kung fu movies is not re- typically not a lot of storyline, not a lot no. of plot. You know, it's pretty much just like ah, oh, master turned on me, bap, 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 You know, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna fight twenty guys and beat them all. You know, I think it's cool to have a little bit of that. Yeah, not not a whole card. So I I've gone the long way around answering you, Adam. But but really from the beginning, my what what influence I do try to have on the NWA is to sort of instill that that culture that like. Hey, uh, the remember what the people came to see tonight, mm. you know, and let's all, and and you will leave a better taste, a better impression on the audience if you do your part tonight to the best of your ability, like and and do your job perfectly, and leave them wanting more, mm. you know. And Trevor gets that. That's why he's gone from you know he he came in and. He originally, like, we had to really kind of convince him to even come. Mm. To, to you know, and, and at first it was he was kind of like, oh, I don't know, I'm not really wrestling anymore, and I'm, you know, I, I don't know, I don't really fit in anywhere. This has very same, very very similar uh, hangups that I had. Mm. You know, it was like I don't really know where I fit anymore. Uh, and so we said, well, we'll come down and you know work a couple of matches, but you can be a producer. You know, you can be a good agent. You know, and of mm. course, like we were. <laughs> You know, we had every intention of wanting him to wrestle. The whole time. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, just, you see his progression and it's like the second he walked out on, you know, the, in the first season, you could just feel people go, oh, yeah. Yeah. This guy fits here. Like, this is, oh, I completely forgot about him, which was great, like, which was good in a way. Because then they sort of go, whoa, this guy's like, I forgot this, how good this guy is. And man, he just fits this. You know, he he came up to he came into WWE at the wrong time. You know, yeah. he just had bad timing. A lot of guys did. That's why we've, you know, Chris Adonis is having a great run yeah. with us now. Same reason because like these guys all got picked up in their twenties. I can relate. I start. I got signed to TNA at twenty one. I wasn't ready for TV. But now we're all in our thirties and we're seasoned. You know, and and it's kind of like, <laughs> hey. Like we're, we're just, we're just reaching our peak for pro yeah. wrestlers here. So like now we're going to, you know, put everyone to work and, and watch everybody, you know, enjoy seasoned kind of guys who, have, you know, really learned how to relax and sort of command the room and take their time and, you know, really understand psychology and tell a different kind of story that maybe, you know, hits the notes that maybe some other wrestling isn't hitting right now. And we do, and again, this is not a knock. I, it's, it's, I have to tread so carefully when I make these kind of remarks because it, it me, everything always immediately gets taken out of context to sort of, especially to antagonize AEW. Like that's just, that's the new thing with online. It's like anything that can be even remotely sort of perceived as some sort of slight or knock on AEW is immediately like, you know, taken out of context and yeah. like, hey, let's get him, everyone, you know, like, you know, and <laughs> like, I was all in. I I was so proud of those guys, you know, and and it's been well documented that, you know, they they approached me about going, and there was no animosity. It was just like, hey man, I've just, I've worked, I've just worked really hard, and I've just sort of got so invested in trying to make a go of this mm. that I would just, I felt like we were just getting it off the ground. Mm. I was like, yeah, I'd had the big ma- I'd had some big matches like with Cody and Marty and you know the other stuff. But in my mind, you're looking at the big picture. I was like, I'm just getting this thing off the ground. Mm. Like, I just can't, you know, it would just, it would be too frustrating for me as an entrepreneur to walk away now because, you know, I am an entrepreneur outside of, you know, outside of wrestling. It's like that. So I sort of have that mindset of, you know, long-term investing and sort of, yeah. re- you know, looking at things and going, got oh, the potential here for, you know, for what I could potentially be rewarded with down the road. And it was it was a gamble. Yeah. It was a roll of the dice, but it was like, I just didn't want to take the, I just didn't want to take the low hanging fruit this time. Mm. No, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and you talk about, you know, the, 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 the card and, uh, and the way it's presented and stuff and the, and the talent you've got in the NWA, we have to talk uh, briefly about Serena Deeb. Obviously she's doing stuff in the NWA and of course 
in uh, in AEW as well. Uh, and and again, someone else you talk about who who uh, you know was underutilized without question within the industry. Yeah. Now look at her. It's just right. you must be so impressed with what she's she's. Perfect. Achieved. Perfect example, and a, and, a, and a wonderful human being, a complete professional, uh, one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And yes, another one who she knew deep down how good she was, mm. but she just, you know, it's tough when you have that skill set, and you're, you know, and and but you, you know, but you see all these other people come up who just, you know, who just seem to just blow right past you because they do something that's kind of of the fashion right now, or, you know, that's something that kind of, or because they, because they're good at Twitter, you know, because, you know, <laughs> and, you know, Lord knows that all the major companies now just put such an emphasis on that, even though I'm still dubious about how much it really translates to, mm -hmm. you know, box office. Um, but be that as it may, yeah, just fantastic to see someone who, who again was like classically trained and never deviated from, you know, the the doing things the right way and and doing things in a way that uh, leaves plenty available to the rest of her colleagues on the card, you know, yeah. but also is able to show how good she is. And more importantly, and the thing that separates Serena from a lot of the girls I see and a lot of the girls who get a lot of who who get you know probably get a lot of praise, yeah, um, is that she makes her opponent look good. Yeah, you know she. <laughs> She doesn't eat anyone's lunch in there. Like it's real, it's real easy to go in the ring and just you know kick the shit out of someone for fifteen minutes mm. and then be like I'm the best, you know, and everyone oh yeah she oh yeah she's so you know or he he's the best. Oh, but again, after a while, no one's going to want to work with you, mm. like because they're going to go, what does that do for me? You mm. know, we're all we're all ten ninety nines. Like we're all independent contractors, whether or not we're under contract to a, a certain organization, it's only for a select period of time. Mm. So you're, you're, you're not only having to, uh, sort of fulfill your role that, you know, that for the, for the company, for that, for that night, but you're also, you are responsible for kind of protecting your own value as well in the market. So, Okay. You, you, someone someone gets over because they just you know kick the shit out of everyone and don't sell anything. You're gonna go well. Pff, why am I gonna work with them if I don't mm -hmm. have to? Because you know clearly their 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 interest is only in uh, if if you're if you can only build your market value by hurting someone else's. Yeah, that's not good business because it's a uh, look the wrestling business is a. That's what makes the wrestling business such a unique animal mm. that you have to be selfish, but you also have to, you have to look at the long term, you have to look at your long term viability in the market by being able to add value to others, mm. you know, and it's a, and it's a, it's a tightrope, but the guys who have longevity, uh, and I'd like to think that I'm sort of one of them at this point, mm. you know, sort of made a decent living and never never got the call from Stanford. <laughs> so it's like, it must be doing something right. But a lot of that is again, and again, um, you know, if you look at, you look at the, the list of guys that I've defended the title against mm. uh, and where they've gone since that time, Robbie Eagles, Jonah Rock, you know, all the way down, like, and then, uh, and, you know, Mike Bennett, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's a, a lot of guys who, are, you know, and I and I, I mentioned this the other day. I, you know, I got a bit, I got a bit heated on Twitter, and you know, it's a rarity for me. But I was just like, you know, fuck it. But I sort of said, like, go back and look at, go, look through the guys that I've defended the title against, and ask all of them. I guarantee you, ninety-five percent of them now make more money than they did prior to wrestling me for the title. Like, I take a lot more pride in that than mm. than whether someone thinks I'm defending the title enough. Mm. Or, you know, or, or, you know, have enough work rate, I don't know, whatever, the, you know, whatever, the, whatever the new thing is this, this yeah. week. But it's like, because this is a business and, uh, and uh, in the long run, what guys remember are the guys who helped them put food on their table for their families. Yeah. You know, they're the guys I remember. That's why you'll never hear me say too much, you know, I'll acknowledge Dixie, Dixie Carter's 
flaws, but you'll never hear me say a bad word about Dixie mm. because she helped me make money. Like she helped me make good money. She helped, you know, she helped put food on my table. Uh, I, you know, and, and that's, you can take everything else out of it. Like that's if any of us who would get to make decent money by, for doing this are so privileged, mm. you know, uh, and uh, you know, that, that's, that's the perspective I always try to maintain. Uh, you talk about, you know, defending the title um, uh, and obviously you're going to have to try and defend it against against Trevor Murdoch on Sunday. There is someone else, though, who is collecting a lot of belts at the moment. Uh, one Kenny Omega across many different companies. Are you concerned at all by uh, by him potentially eyeing up your title? And what do you make of, of what he's been what he's been doing across the likes of, of Impact and AAA and obviously AEW? It, this is this goes back to what we were saying before, where it's impossible for me to answer this question because even even answering it, it will turn into Nick Aldis talks about Kenny Omega, and it's like no, Nick Aldis was asked a question about yeah. Kenny Omega and answered it. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I would keep his name out of my mouth because none of my business, mm. right? But it's I always say the same thing about this. If the business, if the business of it made sense, but I better make a shitload of money, <laughs> you know, otherwise what's the point? Right. Like, and as far as like what he's doing, yeah, good for him. Yeah. Like, I, 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 I cannot, I cannot get distracted worrying about what other people are doing. Mm. That's for fans. This whole interpromotional, like they, you know, they try to sort of stir up this, you know, heat between different promotions and stuff that's the fans mm. like mark's doing that it's not the wrestlers yeah <laughs> you know, like most of us have worked together at some point or other or somewhere down the road like and you just understand that and and look if there are any wrestlers out there who who sort of fall into that um who fall into that mentality of like you know you're supposed to have heat with guys who wrestle for another company or who didn't come to wrestle for the company that you wrestle for or whatever, like grow up. Mm. Like it's business mm. and like everyone's just doing what they felt was the right thing to do for them. Like I love the quality of life I have now. Mm. So anyway, um, no, look, I, I've, I respect Kenny. I don't know him very well. Uh, and you know, I, I hope he's happy doing what he's doing and, and, if there was ever a, a situation where that was a, you know, where that was seriously kind of addressed, like it would just, it, it, I would approach it like a prize fight. It would have to, you know, the, the business terms would have to make sense for me. You, you know, there seems to be a lot of talk at the moment of, uh, of sort of open doors of, of, of different companies working together. Uh, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, you've done stuff with, with the AW guys uh, with All In and, and, and you were on a good relationship with them. I saw you tweeting with people talking about you facing Dustin a while back. Um, what do you make of that? Is that something you, you'd like to see more of in this industry? Because, you know, there's been a lot of speculation of that. And we've seen it again, like I say, with 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 impact and AW and, 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 and things like that. Yes. I mean, again, I'm not, and I'm certainly not trying to say that I was talking about it before anyone else. Mm. But again, you can go back and look at interviews I gave two years ago, three years ago, where I said the future of the business is going to be co-promotion mm. and collaboration because unless now look obviously tony khan could afford it and vince mcmahon can afford it but outside of that there's no you know there's there's not i'm not sure there's any any one place that can really afford to have all of the top top guys mm. you know, in one place and even if you could why would you uh, i've made this i've made this comparison before right <laughs> how many guys are there in wwe right now who if they were to leave WWE would instantly be a top guy somewhere else, mm. like several, there always are because they can afford to have, they can afford to pay Dolph Ziggler a shitload of money, you know, to be there year after year, after year, after year, mm. Dolph Ziggler's like one of the best in the business, but you know, it, not very many places can afford to, <laughs> to, to pay guys who they're using, you know, in that particular spot. Mm. Yeah. Money. Right. So, and inevitably, if you took 
if if you said to someone, okay, you've got unlimited money, uh, you can have anyone you want, fantasy fantasy promotion, mm. right? Okay, who's who's working on top? Mm. Yeah, right. Uh, who's the champion? Oh yeah, but if oh yeah, but now you but what happens to four weeks from now? You're gonna they're gonna claim that you're burying so and so. You're not using him properly, and then four weeks after that, you're gonna say you're oh you're shoving so and so down their throats. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, so and so must have heat because you know they they had to work the opening match. Yeah, well that's a problem when you've got if you have all the top guys working in the same place. Like, <laughs> yeah. Again, it's like I made this I made this. Uh, uh, analogy. I was talking to Billy the other day, and we were we were talking about what I was saying before about you know guys who don't sell or go, you know go into business for themselves and just kind of mm, gobble everyone yeah. up. And I said it's so it's like the equivalent of if you were if you were playing you know if you if you guys were touring right, the Pumpkins were touring, and you just stepped on the stage and just right from the beginning you just started playing a guitar solo mm. and just kept going and going and going and then like <laughs> played a guitar solo for an hour and a half. And everyone goes, wow, that was unbelievable. Okay, guys, see you later. And everyone else, the, you know, the drummer and the bass player and everyone's saying, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know, um, but again, to sort of use that music analogy again, it's like, if you, if you booked, you know, Metallica, uh, the Rolling Stones, you know, Smashing Pumpkins, you know, all these like major, yeah. major bands, oh, they're all going to be on the same concert. It's going to be the greatest concert you've ever seen in your life. Okay, who's going on first? Yeah. Who's closing the show? You think any one of them wants to open? No. You know, well, who, uh, no, I'm, I want to close the fucking show. Well, you know, there you go. That's why there has to be some hierarchy, and that's why you need different promotions. And that's why it makes more sense for promotions to pull their heads out of their own ass and once a year get, you know, okay, hey, you want to go, you want to go halvesies on a big show? 50-50, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, or you want to go three ways, you know, 33% each on the big major show. I'm thinking this guy against this guy, you know, this guy against that guy, you know, and then you start negotiating like, you know, all right, well, look, you know, yeah, it's still, it's still, it's still not easy. But the, if, you know, typically I think if you're doing it right, you should have like, each promotion should have like one or two guys that you know, okay, these are the, these are the guys pulling the wagon. So you can position them where they need to be positioned. And then you can start, you know, playing around with never before seen matchups and, yeah. you know, and all that. It's not that hard. No, exactly. If, if something like that was feasible, uh, who would you, who would you love to, to step in the ring? The dream opponents of, of yours? Well, right now, I mean, if I could wrestle anyone for the title, you know, in a title match with the right build in a, you know, in a, in a sort of, with, you know, with that really kind of, classic sort of build that we like to do for for title matches and mm. we had time to to luxuriate it and, and and you know give it the full attention uh randy orton mm -hmm. um edge uh, and and edge by the way who you know will routinely text me and say oh, man i love this promo i love your match you know so and so and you know he and like when he wrestled randy in that um uh greatest wrestling match or whatever they call yeah. it yeah yeah, yeah that match felt like an NWA title match. And I, yeah. and, and he, and he paid me a very nice compliment where he sort of said like, well, you know, you're the kind of guy, like that kind of stuff is the stuff that me and Randy want to do, you know? And that's it's, true. and I, yeah, for me, I mean, that's, that's huge yeah. for a guy like me to hear it from, from Adam. I mean, cause you know, I grew up watching him. He's, you yeah. know, he's like, you know, he, he was one of my guys. So it's like to, to, you know, to get that level of compliment and, you know, I, 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 I've always, I've always been, um, I've always, you know, I've always thought Roman was the man, like, even when, even when other people were trying really hard to shit on him, I always thought he was the man. And now he finally is because he's actually been allowed to, you know, be himself, like, and embrace like his position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he's incredible. Like, dude, right now, why, why would you, why would, if I was allowed, if I was able to, you know, work with me, why would it not be him? Yeah. Right. Like he and I, and think about that as a contrast, like what a great, you know, what a great story that could be, you know? Uh, and then, uh, obviously, you know, as far as elsewhere, 
you know, Okada gets brought up a lot. Yeah. You know, that would be that. I mean, again, in the right setting. But again, it's, this is not outside the realms of possibility. This used to happen a lot in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It just yeah. wasn't, you know, just you just didn't know about it at the time because it was all happening sort of localized in their media. It's just now because obviously everything's so global. It's now suddenly, for some reason, the fact that everything got opened up so much seemed to make it more difficult to pull these things off. Mm. Where, like, back in the day, it would be like, hey, can we get Flair to wrestle, like, Tenru? Like, yeah, sure. Like, <laughs> how yeah. much are you paying? You know, like, let's figure out the finish. All right. You know, and it, <laughs> and off he went, you know, and, you know, and, and Flair walks away with 50 Gs, you know, whatever. It's like, <laughs> it's like, cool, Matt. Like, Hogan wrestled the Great Muda. It's one of my favorite Hogan matches. Like, and it's, you know... Yeah, well, it can be done. Like, it's just, and I think that's probably where all this WWE and New Japan stuff is coming from now, where they're sort of going, well, why, why can't we just figure out like a, a couple of swaps here and there, like when it's necessary? I mean, they've got Nakamura and, you know, a bunch of guys who had great runs like AJ and stuff in New Japan. Yeah. There's a lot of business to be done. Like, same way, you know, and I, I don't know why that would exclude AEW from working with them either. No. Me in New Japan. I don't know why, you know, and, and so it's like, I just see all that stuff and just go, God, this is such a waste of energy. Mm. Like, can't we just, if everyone, if, and it, it comes down to the audience. If the audience really want a certain match, they've got to start demanding it. Mm. Instead of just sort of going, oh, man, can you imagine what that would be? Oh, you know, oh, you, oh the take my money, Jeff, you know, what, like, no, actually, like, actively demand it. Like, hey, we want, you know, this person against that person. Like, make it fucking happen. You yeah. know, like, stop ignoring it. Um, I think my so issue I think, all is, is, the, is the sort of the tribal nature of it all. Yes. In terms of, you know, I get told on a daily basis I'm a shill for... AW and Raw and SmackDown and NXT and you know wherever else and it's like you can just appreciate all of it and like if you open up those avenues of communication and it isn't so tribal us against whoever it may be whether it be WWE fans shooting on AEW or New Japan or whoever it may be like you say these opportunities will will will, will arise far more I I I had a I I, I spoke to Paul Heyman a while back and the first thing, first words that came out of his mouth was, why didn't you wrestle on that Madison Square Garden show? <laughs> He's like, who has the NWA World's Champion, a guy who's on such a streak, who has, who has, their, who has them at their, at their disposal at Madison Square Garden and then doesn't put them in a match? I said, well, <laughs> not my, you know, it wasn't my, wasn't my ball to play with. Yeah. You know, but it's like, you know, when you think about that, you go, yeah, why didn't, why, why didn't that happen? Mm. Like, you know, because, well, I, I think it didn't happen because, you know, they, they were worried about sort of something uh, potentially, you know, upstaging, you know, what they wanted to. But again, it, if you think like a promoter, you shouldn't really care. No. Because ultimately it's like, a huge, a huge night with some, you know, some great moments and great matches will just leave a positive, you know, taste in everybody's mouth for whoever was responsible for that show. Mm. You know, it wasn't like they were all going to go away and go, okay, well, that's it. I guess we're just going to watch NWA from now on and no one else. Like, <laughs> of course not. You know, yeah. it's just, it's so ludicrous when you think, but that's just the way that everyone, unfortunately, it's just the, the hangover of the Monday Night Wars era. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's still to this day people are pretending like that we all have to be at war with each other, um, you know, and it brings out the best in everyone. And they're like, well, not really, because like right. both companies ended up having to give away about ten years worth of creative in three years yeah. just to stay ahead of each other. And now, we, and now look where we are. Everything's been done. Hmm. Oh, I, I, I remember we went to India for we do rinka king right yeah and the the guy jeff jarrett you know he he put that team together based on having it you know loaded up the the card loaded up the roster with guys who understand wrestling right who get it from who look at it from that long-term business entrepreneurial perspective not guys who are just like oh i just want to get the biggest pop possible and you know this is awesome chance right 
but he still brought a few wrestlers like that to India because he, he was kind of trying to book the cards, you know, layer them the same way he did a TNA card, which was like, okay, you know, start them off with something fast and hot X division, you know, then bring, give them a bit of this, then give them the girls, then give them whatever, then finish with the, you know, whatever. Well, the, the X division guys go out first night and, and the people are just not, they just don't know what they're watching. They're just kind of like, uh, okay, I guess, you know, like they're doing cartwheels and this and that, and, you know, flips and ducks and dodges and catch my boot and spin me around for no reason, catch the other boot, spin me around, you know, all that. Uh, you know, and, and the Indian audience are just like, huh? Friggin' Matt Morgan goes out there and gives a guy a shoulder tackle. The guy takes a big bump and the place erupts. Yeah, yeah. So immediately, like, Gallows, me, Davari, you know, Trevor, he was there. Like, we're all looking at each other going, oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, we, it's like going back in time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You can get so much more out of less. And we got now we've got something we can really build on. And, and you know, these people are so hot for, like, the simplest stuff that we've got such a great opportunity here to really, you know, You've got all we've got all these tools in our toolkit that we can, you know, make money here for a long time. By the time we went back to the second season, someone's diving off the top of the cage. And I you know, and I'm just going, oh like, you know, I was like oh, and I, I was only like twenty four or something at the time. And even I was going, like, what are we doing? Why is someone diving off a cage? Yeah. Like it's a virgin market, you know, like but that's the sort of eternal um you know, it's just one of the eternal struggles in wrestling is that like it's there's you know it, it attracts people who have that golden goose mentality. Yeah. Hey, this golden goose is going to lay one golden egg a week for the rest of its life. But if you cut it open, there's five golden eggs in there you can have right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? you didn't even stop to you didn't even stop to consider it. <clears throat> five eggs right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly right. Um, I asked uh, Twitter uh, what people wanted me to ask you, uh, and I think I have to stick with the most obvious one, which is uh, Hugo. I think Twitter is so great. <laughs> Hugo asks, uh, how long until the third match against Cody? It sort of feels quite quite appropriate right now. We've got the US versus UK thing with with Anthony Agogo recently, a double or nothing. Uh, and, and like you say, you've 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 had such great experience with him over the, the NWA World Heavyweight title, of course. Yeah. Well, apparently he doesn't want to do it, so you'll have to ask him. Uh, OK. OK, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I ask him when I speak to him next regarding that. Um, in terms of uh, advice you'd give to, to aspiring wrestlers, like you say, you came into the business and you sort of learn as you were there. I always like to ask, you know, uh, people who've had such experience that the, the main thing that they would give out uh, to, to anyone watching this who's, who's hoping to get into the industry. Um, it's not something that I've always followed my own advice on. I will qualify that when I say this, but pick your battles. You know, that like it's easy to get it's easy to get upset about, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and it's easy to sort of find yourself locked into um, disagreements that can quickly become sort of toxic kind of feuds. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's best to just kind of walk away from it. Um, I would also just say. Uh, look at uh, approach the business as a business from day one like it will at times earn you a little bit of heat with with people who don't have that same mentality but in the long run you will you will have more control of your own destiny um because the minute that you i see this all the time i see someone debut with WWE or AEW, you know, and right away they're on Twitter and they're going like, oh, you know, I dreamt of this moment since I was seven years old. And, you know, like I'm just, you know, and, and right. It's like, that's great. Right. But save it till you retire. Yeah. Because now you're saying it and you're giving away, you're showing your hand. You just told everybody, you just told them and you told everyone that like, you're just happy to be there. Yeah. 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 You just told the world that, like, wow, you know, just being here is enough. Okay, well, I guess we'll, I guess we, I guess we'll keep that in mind when you, when, when we renegotiate your contract. Mm. 
you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, and I see a lot of that. And I, you know, and I, like I say, you know, it's, this, is, this is not all stuff that I've always adhered to, but it's like, you, you know, treat it like a business. Don't, don't get too, uh, and don't get too sentimental. Mm. Like I have, a, if anyone had a, had a reason to be sentimental about, you know, a, a company they were associated with, it's me. Right. But here's the deal. I don't own any part of the NWA. I don't have any, I don't have any stake in the business. You know, would I like to at some point? Sure. But you know, that's a lofty, that's a lofty ask, right? That's a, you know, that's an ambitious goal, not to say that it's not a good one to have, but I don't own any part of it. It doesn't, none of it belongs to me, right? It's not mine, you know, and you can, that, you know, when I, when I, when I, when I came to the conclusion that I was not going to renew my contract at TNA, you know, that was a, to start with, it was, it came out of anger, but then after a while I had, you know, I still, I still believed it. I still kind of went, okay, just, you know, just think about it think on it longer. And I still just got up, but now it's time to, it's time to go. No matter what happens, it's time to go. But it doesn't mean that it didn't, it wasn't very emotional when you leave. Cause you know, you see all these people like, I saw like Bob Ryder and, you know, Keith Mitchell and just, you know, all the guys, like all the crew guys and all these other people all the way down the, down the line is, you know, and you know, who, you know, sort of helped you go from being this sort of complete greenhorn, like sort of prospect to yeah. being a world champion and, you know, and, and sort of having a responsibility to sort of try to carry the company forward, you know, and it's emotional to okay, that's it. Like, close the door but at the same time you've also just got to look at it as like it, it's a business you know oldest enterprises was in business with tna entertainment for a certain amount of time and now oldest enterprises is in business with lightning one until such a time that it is not at this point you know my contract up at the end of the year so it's like all of this that i do and everything that i'm involved with and everything that i'm committed to you know you have to be, you have to sort of maintain also a healthy awareness that you may find yourself when you least expect it, you may find yourself having to be ready to start all over again. Mm. And if you, if you sort of, if you, if you keep a healthy awareness of that, I think you have, you're, you can, you can have a, you have a bit more power because you, if you, if you're not scared of, going it alone right like you don't you know don't don't, don't be terrified of getting released from your contract mm. i'll tell you let me and this is a good this is a perfect example you know when mickey got the call a few weeks back that she got a release she just she just kind of went okay thanks johnny and looked at me and she went well i just got fired you know and it was like and we sat there for a couple of minutes and you know just tearful, but more from, you know, just again, just because it's like a, it's an emotional sort of situation. Yeah. But then we just sat there and we went, OK, what are we going to do? What what are we? And it wasn't like, what are we going to do? Like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? It was a, oh, cool. Now all those restrictions are lifted. All right. What can we do? Mm. You know, now what are we able to do now? Like, again, looking at the positives and stuff. Yeah. You know. I, I, I launched, uh, I launched my supplement company at the beginning of the year and, we, and it's, and it's doing well. And I'd wanted to move into a women's line of stuff, but you know, for me to do that, I really wanted to have access to Mickey to be the face of it. And as crazy as it sounds, I was sort of reluctant to do that while she was under contract at WWE Yeah, because every week it was like, can't do this. You can't do that. You can't, you know, so in some, you know, so right away, and again, I'm not criticizing them for that. That's, that's, you know, that's, you know what you're signing up for. That's another yeah. thing I would say to you guys, like, Hey, don't be in a rush to sign a contract. Like, <laughs> cause the contract works both ways, right? You, you're making a commitment to them, but they need to make a commitment to you too. You know, like, uh, guys who, you know, sign contracts where the, you know, where, the, where then the, the organization is not obligated to, pay them anything i just go well, what kind of, kind of contract is that mm. like you agree not to wrestle anywhere else but you only get paid if they book you like 
mind blowing. Anyway, but you know, this time around, because she's got her own, you know, she's got so many other things that she's doing. And I've, you know, we've got, we've got our own things that we're doing, you know, on, on the entrepreneurial side, it's like, great. All right. Well, cool. Now, you know, and, and within the first two or three days, like she booked like tens of thousands of dollars worth of appearances. So it was like, all right, well, uh, you know, that's, that's that part of it covered. And like now, you know, now, now we've got time to work on this and that, and we don't have to keep sort of tiptoeing around your contract and, you know, we can call that person back. who wanted to use you for this thing. And, you know, all that sort of, it's just yeah. like world's opening up. And, um, so yeah, it, it's it just, again, like if, if you, if you take the time to, uh, build and develop your own act and your own brand as an entity in, in the pro wrestling space, you immediately have more power and more value than someone who is just like, please sign me, you know, like every single bit of the national treasure character and everything that I do is mine. Mm. Like, it's not like when I, if, if I was to ever move on from here or anywhere else, it's not like I'm suddenly like, Oh, well, I'll have to change my name and I won't be able to use this, you know, <laughs> I won't be able to do this stuff or that stuff. Like it's mine. And Billy believes in that, you know, Billy believes in his, you know, cause he's an artist. Like, so he shares that sort of mm. mentality of like, cause he's been on that. He's been there on the other side. You know, I wrote this fucking song. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how we had to do it. You know what I mean? It's, it's my song. Like it's, it's my song. It's my talent. It's my act. So it's like, and and he paid me a, a, as big a compliment as anyone could pay me. Uh, we, we had a, a meeting recently, uh, and and he was discussing his decision to to basically sort of shut everything down during the pandemic and just not and just sort of you know go into sort of hibernation. And he said. He goes, you know, I knew that it was going to be, I knew it was going to be tough for the momentum of the company, but I knew if I had Nick, I'd be okay. And that's about as big a compliment as anyone can pay you. No, that is, that is so, fantastic. That, right. So, and that's, and that's sort of where, again, like, yeah, my loyalty is to the NWA. I'm very proud of what I've been able to accomplish both as a wrestler here and, you know, as a sort of, uh, as someone helping shape the, the overall company, you know, on, on the business side. But uh, it's all it all just goes into your whole tapestry of your career, and it just you know builds value, take experience from it, and you know be be willing and able to adjust and adapt as you need to. Uh, as we bring this to a close, Nick, uh, just love to know the uh, uh, the future plans of yours, whether they be with the NWA. You talk about your contract expiring at the end of the year. Uh, any, is there anything still on that bucket list you, you'd still want to achieve? Yeah, look, I mean, I don't. Uh, certainly at the moment it doesn't seem like wwe is a is an option you know it, it certainly does it, it's not something that i sort of look at right now and go okay that's you know that's next hmm. I, don't, I don't rule anything out but yeah i mean look i want to headline some big shows like that's really what i want to do um and whatever shows they are like i hope that there are shows or i hope that there are shows that the nwa is is a part of, in, you know, in, to our point earlier, in some capacity, mm. you know, um, I believe that can be done. And uh, I would love to be able to be uh, responsible for some of those changes, the same way that Cody and the Bucks were, you mm. know, in sense, like in that respect, that, that, you know, they helped sort of um, prove that with the right infrastructure and the right resources and, you know, everybody sort of working together, you can pull it off and I'd like to be part of some more of that. Um, and I don't think it's any, anyone who's been around me and knows me in the industry knows, you know, it's no secret at this point that I certainly have aspirations post wrestling to, you know, to, to, to work on the executive side mm. because I get as much enjoyment out of that as I do from performing. I really do. Cause I, I, I love, business uh, and i love this business because mm. it's you know, it's such a unique sort of <laughs> it's a it's a bit of a casino <laughs> you know it's a, it's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of dice rolling and uh you know i sort of liken 
I sort of liken it to being, you know, in the rest of us is like, is likened to being in a casino. You sort of go play at this table for a bit and that one's paying out and then, okay, time to walk, walk away from the table, go find a new table, you know, go play something else. So, yeah. Um, and like I said, just those big matchups, because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like I, you know, obviously want to cement a legacy and want to be remembered. And the best way to do that is to have those memorable moments mm -hmm. you know, that, that live on for a long time. Well, best luck with all that. You do realize that saying the word casino means you're now going to be forever associated with the Casino Battle Royal whenever AW does the next one of those. But uh, we would love to see you there. Uh, and obviously, it would be great seeing you in uh, in the NWA. Uh, and you can see Nick against Trevor Murdoch this Sunday live on Pay-Per-View on Fight. When are Shadows Fall? Make sure you go and check that out. We'll put all the links in. the UK-friendly time at the UK-friendly time, uh, UK time, yes. 4 p.m. Eastern and 9 p.m. Uh, UK time. Yes, very much, very much. That's one of the main reasons we have that time slot, so that so that the so the Brit fans actually have a pay per view they can watch at a reasonable hour. It is very much appreciated, Nick. Uh, I could chat to you all day. Thank you so much for taking time out of day to chat to us. Best of luck on Sunday, and hopefully we'll speak again soon. Thank you very much, Nick. All this. Thanks, Adam.